a hundred light years from Earth, an alien communications outpost TESS-09 detects a signal from a distant star system. Within the signal, there is a short message. On behalf of all mankind, we seek to establish contact with other intelligent civilizations throughout the universe. We send our peaceful greeting with the hope of coexistence with me. The outpost has a built-in system designed to intercept communication attempts from outer space. The moment it detects a signal, it initiates a chain of automated protocols that swiftly places their entire leadership on high alert. After decoding our message, it is presented to the Grand Council, which now must choose the next step, one that may determine the fate of their entire civilization. According to game theory, they face three possible choices. They can ignore the signal, they can reply to it, or they can launch a preemptive strike. If they choose to reply, their decision branches into three possible outcomes based on how we respond. If our message is sincere, there is strong potential for a cooperative relationship that could benefit them. If we ignore their reply for any reason, their choice ends in no gain and no loss. However, the complication here lies in the fact that these messages take a hundred years to travel. During that time, our political and ideological landscape could shift dramatically. By the time their reply reaches us, we will have far more advanced technology and may now be hostile, which introduces the risk of annihilation. Because of this uncertainty, replying to alien signals is not an optimal strategy for long-term survival. While taking the risk once might pay off, a civilization that routinely responds will eventually run out of luck and reply to a hostile civilization. If they choose to ignore us, the outcome is similar. There is no potential gain, and we might still discover them through other means, leading back to the riskier reply scenario. The only action that consistently avoids long-term extinction is a preemptive strike. While it may cost resources, compared to the alternatives, it is infinitely more optimal for survival. This is, of course, a highly simplified version of the game-theoretic logic. However, even when more variables are introduced, the fundamental outcomes tend to remain the same. One counter-argument, recently made by Professor David Kipping, suggests that a preemptive strike is not guaranteed to succeed, and if it fails, retaliation might follow. In such case, an attack behavior is only worthwhile if the probability of attack being successful exceeds the probability that civilizations don't attack first. While it's true that no strike is guaranteed to succeed, this still doesn't make it worse than the alternatives. That's because any civilization capable of launching a planet-destroying attack from 100 light-years away would almost certainly be interstellar and would take every precaution to ensure the strike can't be traced back to their home system. Even if we assume, perhaps naively, that every form of interstellar strike is traceable, the argument still doesn't hold. In such a case, civilizations would simply use an expendable remote star system to carry out such operations, keeping their true origin hidden. This leads to a seemingly hopeful interpretation. Civilizations can use decoy systems to communicate. If the signal doesn't originate from their home world, then a preemptive strike would not wipe them out. Such decoy system could serve as a test to gauge whether the initiating civilization is genuinely peaceful. But this introduces a problem from ignore scenario. Even if alien homeworld is hidden in the initial exchange, it can still be discovered later by other means, looping us back into the same long-term existential risk. The only potential silver lining here is that before launching a preemptive strike, an alien civilization cannot be sure whether our message originates from our homeworld or a decoy system. That ambiguity makes the cost of preemptive strike potentially higher, but not by much. The second argument made by David Kipping is that alien civilizations would likely detect us long before receiving our radio signals, either through other techno-signatures, such as traces of industrial gases like CFCs, or through broader surveillance methods. He also suggests that, even in the absence of detectable techno-signatures, a sufficiently advanced civilization might simply sterilize all habitable planets using self-replicating von Neumann probes. The problem with these probes is that, while a fascinating concept in science fiction, 
they are a potential great filter. The most plausible scenario is that civilizations that develop such probes always get destroyed before they can produce self-replicating models capable of sustained interstellar travel. In essence, von Neumann probes always end up forming a dead ring around the star in place of the very planet they consume, trapped and inert, never spreading beyond. While it's true that aliens could detect us via technosignatures well before our radio waves reach them, this doesn't weaken the dark forest argument. The first detectable signs of our industrial activity didn't emerge significantly earlier than our radio emissions. So even if a civilization 100 light years away had noticed our CFCs and launched a preemptive strike, even if traveling at 99% the speed of light, that strike would still be en route. In other words, we are simply living in a grace period before an existential event occurs. As for the idea that alien civilizations would target every habitable planet, we have no definitive understanding of which planetary conditions can give rise to intelligent life. When we search for aliens, we focus on Earth-like planets in familiar zones and look for biosignatures associated with carbon-based life. But we don't know whether carbon-based life is the standard or an exception to the rule. If other life forms are possible, then virtually every type of planet becomes a candidate, including gas giants, as they can have moons. The idea of wiping out everything in the galaxy becomes absurdly impractical. However, all of this pales in comparison to the strongest argument in favor of the Dark Forest hypothesis, the staggering improbability of technological parity. We often assume, as even Professor Kippings does, that meaningful communication with an alien civilization is possible, but realistically, any civilization we encounter is almost certain to be millions, if not billions of years ahead of us. To them, we would be like a virus trying to talk to a human being. In fact, viruses are constantly attempting to interact with us, but we routinely destroy them. A civilization with billions of years of technological development might not even consider us alive in a meaningful sense. They could eliminate us for reasons that are completely trivial to them, just as we sterilize a spoon before using it without ever thinking about the bacteria we're wiping out. One of the most misguided assumptions is that alien civilizations would emerge around the same time as ours. In reality, the window for technological evolution spans billions of years, making the chances of finding a civilization in our galaxy that's even remotely compatible with us astronomically small.